this is an introduction and a fun look at Frank Frazetta and his sketchbook. Basically, it's a collection of some of his sketches over the years. Frank Frazetta, if you don't know, is a very famous, now passed away, fantasy illustrator. He really created the genre of fantasy art in the 60s and 70s and through to the 80s. He started out with like pulp covers that revitalized and uh, well I guess like yeah revitalized the pulp era of books and then his Conan the Barbarian covers and other Conan books and fantasy books uh, began becoming very big sellers because of his artwork you know uh, the reason we know about Conan was because uh, of the covers that uh, Frazetta did for the uh, the Howard uh, books in the 60s. Some of them obviously are finished works. I mean, this is not really a sketch. This is like a finished illustration. I was very lucky to get this book and actually I have the, the second volume because it's, it's now out of print. They sold out pretty fast and I was at the museum, the Frank Frazetta Museum, which is at his estate in Pennsylvania, which is about an hour and a half from New York City, which is very convenient. So uh, I've driven there a few times and it's a nice pastime to go there and visit with his, um, his son and Frank Jr. and his uh, wife who handle the estate. Um, the gallery. The great thing about like Frank Frazetta is he kept all his originals because he worked in a field where reproduction was the key. He made a deal that like look you know take a photo of my painting for the cover but then give me back my painting you know what, what the hell are you gonna keep it for you know. So he started to copyright his images and uh, then he could make posters and, and created quite a business for himself. So here you see like preliminaries, his sketches for the final, and it's almost identical. So it's amazing like how he just figured that out like in the first stroke of things. He's very big on composition, you know, uh, you know, leading the eye, it's just smooth. He kind of splits the canvas in two there. And you see even the signature balances everything like it fills perfectly fills like the empty space there. That's something I always consider too and like you know where he I mean he could put the signature here but he you know he puts it there. So here's preliminaries. So this is the sketchbook like part of it where like it shows the thumbnails. Yeah, I mean, he is such a master in so many ways. Okay, this is a lot of sketches for the Tarzan illustrations that he did. A lot of them in ink there. Beautiful foliage. I mean, he was well known for that. I always wonder like where they got all that reference back then you know like he he was also a keen observer he was a, you know a master and then working in oil what he did like in fantasy art in terms of like the way he treated fantasy art with oil and his knowledge of lighting and and color dynamics and composition I mean he he made masterpiece artworks like in the same way Rembrandt made artworks only in the fantasy art genre from his imagination and prior studies. So one of the myths that he liked to create for himself and, and if you visit the Pennsylvania Museum, you'll, you know, his, his, uh, his, you know, his uh, daughter-in-law and like his son will likely 
say that, oh, he didn't use any reference and he just came up with these things from his mind and most of his final paintings were done like in a one night sitting, you know. To some extent, it's probably true that he did like, you know, he kind of let the inspiration build up and then he finished those in like one night with tweaks and changes probably the following day. Uh, and certainly after print, there's a lot of paintings that he redid and retouched up after having been printed because of those rust jobs. But the, one of the best things of this sketchbook is the life drawings. So in the life drawing, you could, you could see how he studies lighting on live models. And he doesn't come up with those like poses from anywhere like uh, uh, the thing about life drawing you, you don't you don't get the poses always that you want to do in the paintings because you know like in, in his paintings people are off the ground they're flying in the air and stuff so you can't capture those you know sometimes you could capture them with photographs and he did take photographs of action shots a lot of himself but one of the things that life drawing will help with is just getting you aware of the anatomy. So once you know anatomy like really, really well, then you can make up some things. But one thing that I noticed, and, and I love to talk about this with uh, my artist friends, is it's, it's fun to see him making up anatomy on the actual model. Like, who's got, you know, a butt this fine, you know, like, look at it, you know, it's like, it's like so perfect and peachy and everything. So I feel like in cases like this, he just like accentuate things. And, and that's one of his skills as an artist. He is great at selling the figure, you know, at selling anything. And sometimes it's like the combination of the figure or like some cool uh, detail on like an iron helmet or something like that. You know, so he's he knows how to like sell things, you know, and then a lot of other things are like kind of mysteriously faded into like, you know, a wet oil paint, like blurred in in the background and light, light underpaintings. And he, he'll bring out the things that he wants you to look at. So again, like he's studying lighting here. Very subtle. I mean, just everything is just wonderfully perfect like such wonderful knowledge of the, the shapes, you know, like he could just rough something very loosely and it's just perfect. You know, there's nothing's too overworked because he knows it, you know? And these are very, very fast. I mean, I could tell that this is maybe like a 20 minute drawing and this is maybe less so, like 15, uh, maybe even 10. You can tell by the line quality because he works fast. I always tell people that, I mean, these are very quick. These are like maybe two minutes at most. Um, I always tell people that when you're learning to draw anything, you have to go slow because artists are, are impatient, right? But so you have to go very, very slow when you're learning. But then once you've mastered that one aspect that you're studying and trying to get right, you know, whether it's like drawing hands or something like that, you know, you gotta go really, really slow. And then and then once you get good or decent, you've mastered, you get comfortable, then you next time you're drawing hands, you can speed through it to get to your next challenge. You know, like like you speed through that a bit because you're comfortable and you do it better quicker, you know? But at the very beginning, you have to struggle and you have to do things wrong and, and it has to look awkward. So he, he just knows muscle, like what's underneath the muscle so well. And it's funny because it's like a combination of, of knowledge and then like the Loomis method basically, where the Loomis method, you know, is like building everything with structure because when you when you see his paintings later, especially of women, Frazetta girls is a term. In fact, the Frazetta 
uh, a state website, and Instagram is like for Zetter Girls. So, uh, you know, he's got a distinct way of drawing and painting uh, his, his women, and that's evidently because he's built his own uh, anatomy for them through, through a Loomis-like method. So he knows anatomy very, very well, but then he, he makes up his own too. I mean, beautiful shading here, like the belly button, the way he shows the volume, and whew, unbelievable. This is a gorgeous thing. Uh, like beautiful drawing here, very elegant, like the lines, are, you know, these subtle, you know, and he, he shades, uh, ah, he shades the interior there, so it's like this, it just, there's a beautiful line, you know, like, and even like, uh, you know, the crotch there, it, it almost like points to, to the top, it like directs the eye. Yeah, what, the best part of this sketchbook is seeing the life drawing, in my opinion. It's the most valuable part. Because this is, this is where you see how good he actually is, you know, like that nothing's a fluke, you know. He's just observing from life, but then he's really selling the figure. Like, I feel like, like all this... He's just like accentuating all the muscles more so. I mean, I get the sense that he's just selling it. You know, he's picking the angles and he's selling it. And it's hard to say if he had his own models or he went to like a session. Oh, look, it says here 10 minutes, 10 minutes. He did this in 10 minutes with the shading. Uh, so I, even the early ones I, where there was more shading, I was uh, thinking it was like maybe 20 minutes. So here where there's like this uh, older figure, she shows up in the next volume too, I believe. One thing that I noticed is like, he really like goes extra detailed on like the breasts. And I feel like that gives the figure life and it's I mean it, he kind of sexualizes the the women too but he also by by giving more detail to the breasts he makes them more fertile so she's like you know looks like she's maybe 50 or plus or something but he he makes her like really vibrant and fertile and that's 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 a choice It's an artistic choice. And beautiful stuff here, you know, with the with the cellulite and everything. So he's studying things that he's gonna bring to painting. That's what he's really doing. So he's studying basically everything in black and white first, and then he's gonna use these in little aspects of his paintings in the future, he memorizes these sh shadows and the way like light reflects and the curves and, and you know, this stuff. I mean, I've seen this in other paintings of his, you know, like right here, what's happening in the hip, you know. So he'll translate that to his paintings. This phenomenal stuff, I can't get enough of this. So even this, I mean like, wow, I mean, she's, she's perfect. I mean, either she's perfect or he's accentuating things even more, you know? Yeah, these are two minutes, see? Two minutes, he's writing. This is warm up. So this looks a little awkward, like his early, just like mine, like my early drawings, not always like the best or I get warmed up, like this is five minutes. So he's doing quite a lot with the shading in five minutes, but then he's just concentrating on parts in this one. This is another beautiful one. Yeah.
nice broad pencil. You know, not very sharpened. And just getting like big outlines. Gorgeous, gorgeous. The way the the shadows, he just catches the shadows, boom, boom, boom. The shoulder here is like phenomenal. You know, the way it, it the flesh curves around itself. Great study of the hand, the thumb kind of pointing out there a little bit towards us. Great for shortening on the knee, everything. It's like just wonderful. I mean, he's a master. He's a sheer master, you know. Reminds me of some of um, Singer Sargent's studies, quick studies, you know. It's really the same quality. And, and in that era, in the 40s and 50s, 60s, I mean, you know, artists, that's what they knew. They knew fine art and pulp magazines weren't really like considered real art. But Frazetta is doing his best to just to make things like amazing. And I don't know if he's like really trying to to put himself at that level as like, you know, Rembrandt and, and such. I think he's just really giving all the considerations that he could to the illustrations. He's just trying to be really great. There's a picture of him with the Conan painting in, in the background. So he must have known like this is a good one. Beautiful to see the sketches, very rough sketches. It's amazing that they all, they still kept those, you know. So these are the covers that made him very, very famous. At, at a certain point, they, these covers became so popular that he would just get commission like, give us a painting and we'll put it on some cover. Like you just give us something, we'll match it up with some book, you know? Be, because there were just so, such powerful images. But he started out like, in cartooning and he did like animal cartoons which there we go animal cartoons he did a series of these and a bunch of comic strips this one drawn 1955 I forget what year he was born in this 40 1940 sketch yeah so this is very early that he's like must have been Fritz so he must have been like a teen so this is what he's doing as a teen These are copies of other styles, I think. Some cartoon he was working on. Watercolor. You know, these are just kind of, uh, I think he's just doing, drawing an idea and they're just kind of going with ink a little bit more than usual. And the motion, that's one thing. I mean, I think you have to be athletic to really get the motion right. 1950. Uh, this is again like, it's like a, from his teens, I believe. Here he's like figuring out the color palette, but he's got like the action, it's the same, you know, like the composition and everything is the same. It's amazing that he knows it from the beginning. Like, this is great. Like, he knows exactly what he's going to do from the beginning. He, he gets, like, a vision, and then he does it. These are, I guess, like, different preliminaries, different stages of the same work. Uh, this, this I remember seeing, like, as a famous uh, sketch, like uh, illustration, the final version. 
this is a sketch of this beautiful like you know the background of the city and everything perfect amount of detail you know like makes it believable okay and then like you know nice attention to detail at the Chrysler building and the girl like she's she's covered in just the right places you know enough to to pass the comics code authority because you can't quite have like nudity on the cover Th this shows up later in, in a famous painting of his, the Swamp Demon one. So I'm sure like, like earlier, you know, I'm sure he's booked models for himself. He had like a pretty fit wife as well. So I'm sure she posed, he posed for himself, maybe took some photographs. And then he just like had a good photographing memory that he can memorize these these shots and then reproduce them and, and fudge his way to realism. I got to see this last year in person, the original. It was quite amazing. So yeah, this is what a sketchbook looks like, you know, just like uh, rough ideas, often multiple versions of the same idea, just trying to figure out like the best pose for it. Yeah, here's, here's that, that painting, the Swamp Demon, and then he repainted it. So it used to be like this with like, um, mammoth and then it, it was revised to this which is you know more powerful this is interesting so he liked the pose here he kept that but then he changed like the lizard also this kind of turns and you know, it's important when you're composing to have a s strong silhouette. Like, even if this was blocked in the character, it it's pretty much clear that that there's like some sort of lizard, you know, because you've got the tongue sticking out. So it'll still read. Everything will read. And he added the girl here, which maybe in silhouette wouldn't read as well, but the profile of the face would. Beautiful, beautiful sketches here, like showing movement. This is in the air. Just the f sheer fact that like so many of his figures are nude just indicates how important he felt that life drawing was. You know, he, he brought like the characters and the subjects down to their essence of, of movement and nature and primal energy. Beautiful ink. I mean, you see it in the inking here. Great reproduction. So, I mean, this feels like he inked on top of this, so maybe he photographed it before. Fire and Ice was a famous movie that he inspired and worked on as a consultant for Ralph Bacci. And he did the cover. But all the characters were designed by him. This is, uh, this is always one of my favorite paintings. The Huns.
This is amazing how figured out this already was in the early stage. Some of these like he just nailed from the beginning. This one, it took him like a couple of tries there. You know, he had a different pose for the guy, which isn't a bad pose, but this is like way more dynamic. You know, the legs across each other. I like this. I love this preliminary. This I'd like to go into more depth because um, separately because this is a remake of a story in EC Comics that Wally Wood initially drew and this was like Frank Frazetta who drew some EC stories was commissioned they were going to reissue the story in some like collection or something like that and um, they were going to have him redo it because it was like a popular story and the premise was that like there's some like female serial killer on the loose and it plays on the, ra on the radio and there's this guy in a cabin and uh, this, you know, he hears this, and then the next thing, like this beautiful girl shows up at his cabin, and she's like, "Oh, you know, I'm lost, and this and that. Can I spend the night?" Blah blah blah. And uh, so he starts getting. She's like beautiful. She's making passes at him, and um, this is the original story. And uh, he starts getting paranoid uh, that she's like the the crazy killer that escaped from like a lunatic asylum. And that one at the end, uh, he pushes her outside because he, he's afraid that she's going to kill him or something like that. And she gets torn apart by the actual lunatic outside. And then when he goes out, she's dead. Uh, so, yeah, so he, Frank Frazetta was commissioned to redo it and he did all these beautiful studies. And, and they're all unfinished, but geez, like. Kiroscuro and the compositions like look you know like boom the house you know everything is just framed perfectly and self studies I'm sure because that looks just like him and there's probably a competitive nature here because he's trying to outdo that story it's kind of good in a way that it didn't come out because Wally Wood did like a stellar job. But I mean, what Frazetta does here is like, oh, you know. I mean, it's hard to s tell how he was going to cut these up into panels because it almost seems like they're separate illustrations and somehow he's going to maybe cut them up on a page and panel them out. They almost look like like individual studies. And it's weird how he had him on like this mathematical grid. But just gorgeous studies. Like everything is so sexy, you know, like you could see the nipples through the shirt, you know, like everything. It just like seeps and drips sexuality. And he couldn't help himself like putting figures and everything like stuffed taxidermy. I guess this is like maybe the title card here. This seems like from a head, like a headshot you might have seen in some movie. Seems like a copy of one of those famous actresses. Unbelievable. This this reminds me of Dave Stevens, who uh, was an artist in the 80s, who copied a lot of this kind of l precise line and brushwork. He created uh, Dave Stevens created like The Rocketeer, which ended up being a movie.
but the, the spotting of blacks is phenomenal. Uh, this, I think this is, I wonder if this is supposed to be a real squirrel or a stuffed squirrel, but all the animals are kind of like looking over like she's so hot. Uh, that the, like this, even the squirrels like, you know, staring at her. And just like the the shadow, the way he handles the shadow from the tricep, it's just like he he just emphasizes it so much. And the great choice of the black shirt, I think that's freaking brilliant. You know, the poses pose, posing like the the arches in the face. I mean, it just he was on, in a groove and. This is powerful too. It's like got that that uh, strong strong energy of like a couple, you know, uh, against the odds kind of deal. The boots off the ground, you know. Yeah, I mean, you could tell he was really going to town on these illustrations. So this chapter is like personal work. So these are just kind of sketches that he was doing for himself. Because I guess he did so much, so many commissions. He did a series later on of like just these highly rendered pencil sketches, which were quite good. This is cool. Yeah, this is a, a very amazing painting, which he reworked a few times. And I actually liked like earlier versions. See there, it says, it shows here how he reworked it. So this is the final version. But I kind of liked, I probably liked the first version without like, you see the, the crack is like extra emphasized which kind of makes it sexy, you know, like it's like you really notice it like when it's small. And then, but in that last version, he smoothed out the horse and I like the horse like more muscular like that, you know? I feel like everything is blurred and here he's like trying to, she's trying to slow down the horse, like pull, rein him in, which is an interesting choice. But I, uh, yeah, I kind of prefer the, the original version. But that happens, you know, he might, uh, who knows what he felt, like which one was his favorite. Sometimes you just, you overwork it. In the original, you could see like, like the, the part here around her butt and her body, like they're really cracked, you know, like it's a lot of layers of paint. So the paint started to crack. This is a solved portrait. studies it doesn't look like life drawing so it's like he's making it up I guess or he's looking at photographs and stylizing them it's just to so it doesn't look like he's copying from actual magazines what he was great at was like making up the figure, you know, he, he could pose, he knew anatomy so well that he could pose an animal or a person in positions that were not natural to them. Like this, this is very awkward for the horse, but it still looked good. Same with these, like, it's almost like these legs look like real human legs, you know, so he added like, human attributes to his animals often. But he knew the anatomy really, really well. These are, uh, this is his wife and his son, Frank Jr. 
Beautiful, beautiful uh, portraits of his family. Left-handed drawings. Oh yeah, he later in life he had a stroke, and he had to learn how to draw and paint again, just with his left hand, his non-dominant hand, and this is what he was doing. So he had to teach himself. You know, so he still knows, he still has the keen eye, you know, and who knows how good that was, still was after the stroke, you know, but he still had the eye and now he had to like use his other hand to, to draw. Fascinating. This is for his wife, so I guess he was like religious, or at least she was, you know. So yeah, Frank Frazetta, Sketchbook, Volume 1.